Okay, time to take a look at the Vivor engraving machine. So we've got our instructions. Oh, wow. This is something I've never seen with one of these. This is already assembled. Now this isn't the whole thing assembled, but it is a good portion of it. I'm used to having to assemble these and that takes over between a half hour and a few hours. This is a lot of work that's already done. That's awesome. So we got our controller we can see everything is well labeled on there. So that is very nice. We got some wiring. We get, oh, that's cool. It actually comes with a few bits. That's nice. And then we got a few brackets. We got our power supply and cable. We got a USB. It actually comes with a thumb drive. We've got our display. We got a little brush. That's interesting. Looks like they really wanted to make sure that you could actually use this thing right out of the box. And then we got the carriage and the spindle. It also has a Z axis on it, which is excellent. Not all of them do. So the main thing for me right now is just how nice it is that everything is already relatively put together. So you've got rubber feet on the bottom. And I really like the Z axis. It is very rare to find one that looks that nice. So it says the first step is we're going to put the controller on. We already got a couple of T-nuts in this track, which is gonna make that easier. And it says we're gonna put that on with the power switch facing the middle and kind of off to this side. Got everything labeled. These are the M4 bolts. There's four of them and that is for this. And it even comes with the Allen to install them. All right, so I got those installed. It is not tight, so I can still move this around a little bit if I need to. And then I'm gonna use the M5 bolts to attach the gantry to the base. So these holes on the base, these are not T-nuts. These are just holes that are drilled and then tapped, which is nice because that means we don't have to worry about where we're gonna be putting this thing, but it does mean that we have to be a little bit more careful whenever we're screwing this in because we do not wanna strip that extrusion. So all the bolts are started, now I can lock those down. I don't want to go too much with this. I just want to give them a little bit. So what's normally the hard part is actually going to be pretty easy on this one for a couple reasons. First thing is they're all labeled. So this tells you exactly what this cable is for. More importantly, they already have these things wrapped. So I don't even have to do that. This is by far the most put together CNC I've ever seen. So we got X motor, we got Y motor, and then we got Z motor. And this has the most connections on it, but that's okay. You can see they even got the links measured out already. So this one, we got the limit switches. We got the motor, we got the spindle, and then we got positive and negative. And on the CNC, everything's labeled on here as well. We got Z limit switch, Z motor, X motor, Y motor. You can so you've got this cable sticking out here and that is for the limit switches which you can kind of see you can see one right there so that's going to make sure that the table doesn't crash into anything it's going to stop when it hits that so you got one at the front one at the back and then one on each side and this is interesting it actually says on here laser so this you can actually be set up for a laser if you want to do that so on the side it says x motor so i'll plug x motor in there and that will plug into x motor there same thing for y motor and z motor we've got y limit down here that is going to make this X limit. Plug that into limit. And it looks like I might have to move this controller over a little bit after all. Just because I want to make sure that I got plenty of throw. Just want to make sure I'm not going to be binding anything up. On the side here we got Z limit. Then we've got Z motor. Then we got plus. Matches with plus. And minus goes on minus. And the motor will plug in on the top. That was super easy. So we got an option for an offline controller. So I'm going to see if we can make that work. And it actually comes with an SD card. So it says to disconnect the USB cable from the main board to use the controller, which is fine. So you just use one at a time. So we got a Z probe, that is what this is. This is a Z axis puck. So that's gonna allow this machine to find out where zero actually is. So with this one, we can set the units that we wanna move it. So it's got close, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, one, and then 10. That's pretty neat. That's cool. So right now it is just going straight to the limit switches to try to find zero. Neat. So that is zero. So that is the largest increment and we can bring that all the way down to 0 0.05. So you can't even see it. So now we will try to connect it to a computer. 
So I put the USB drive in, it's got the software and a user manual. So the user manual is just a copy of what we already have. If you wanna have a digital copy of this manual, you got it right here. So I'm gonna to go to software, driver, and we will install the driver first. So I'm gonna grab one of my bits. We'll throw that into the chuck and lock that down. So right now I wanna be able to set the Z depth so that it's gonna have a perfect zero. That's what this is for. This is a puck that you can use to probe to find that zero. So it looks like we don't have to install anything. We're just gonna to go to candle. And it looks to me like this motor is a little bit too high so I'm not gonna be able to make contact. So I'm going to loosen this up and drop the motor a bit. Because bare minimum, it has to be able to make contact. I'll just bring it down so that it's close and then we will do a probe there we go so now we've got our zero So that is pretty interesting. So this cardboard is thicker than the board I intend to use. So it definitely make a little up plus the fact that it's just cardboard, but so far the test looks good. Let's go ahead and try the real thing. With these clamps, they kind of got it so that, uh, just so you're not gonna lose anything. Flip the wing nut over, spin that on, then a washer, then the clamp, and then the T-nut. is pretty cool that's awesome so yeah that is one very cool cnc if you like engraving stuff that guy will work for you